Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we are sketching this scene. So a sort of light and loose sketch of a interesting coastal scene in Heathrow, Greece with a few punches of colour but focusing on how we suggest complexity like these stairs and people without creating ourselves a huge amount of work and stress. So let's have a bit of fun, let's sketch and um, I'll see you on the other side. Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thank you for joining me again. So today we are going to be sketching this scene. It's a fascinating sort of set of stairs, houses um, on the island of Hydra, Hydra, near Athens. Going to be doing it in my normal sort of carbon X ink using a platinum preppy fountain pen. Going to go across both pages and we're just going to add a hint of colour, not a huge amount of colour, but a hint of colour on top of a fun, interesting, as ever, wibbly wobbly little line sketch. So without further ado, let's get going. I'm going to have this house, this sort of key house, just going to cross over the two pages because for me, having that little crossover is often quite fun when you're using a sketchbook. This sketchbook, by the way, is just a, a sort of own brand one by Jackson's Art. It's quite nice. It's um, quite thin so uh, it does warp quite a lot you can see some of the warping here for example but you get a lot of pages the text is very nice um, and you know it's, it's been good to me so far so I'm going to continue to experiment with it I do like trying different sketchbooks and things and I often sketch on plain paper but it's fun to experiment and try different sketchbooks and, and things like that so just Come back to you uh, wittering on about my sketching before I forget what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get these big shapes, these big shapes going down. We've got the sort of little platform to the side of the house. There's some little bits of greenery as well. I've got a very thin white face here. And then a much bigger sort of shaded area of the house. Um, the house, I guess, is the sort of easy part of this, isn't it? We know how to draw houses. We're reasonably confident, I imagine, in drawing them. There's all these simple, simple shapes, and they're also just things that we draw all the time. There are complex things like these windows. I've done videos uh, in the past on windows. If you just check out my channel, just search Toby Urban Sketch Windows, you'll find that video if, if you want a few pointers for how, how I do them. But, you know, beyond windows and textures and things like that, the houses are just our bread and butter, aren't they, as, as urban sketches especially. But what's not easy, leading up to this obviously, haven't I, are things like stairs, steps, people, and we've got all of those in this image as well. So we're going to be thinking as we build up these shapes about how we can sort of capture those without, without the fuss and the difficulty. Just working on some of these background areas and these sort of got this funny road just going up the edge here. I was staying here fortunately with a friend of mine who lives in Athens which is a great way to have a, a cheap holiday um, and also to be shown these sort of fascinating places which you might not otherwise um, see or perhaps just in the case of Hydra which is quite expensive afford to be able to see but yeah the fortune of having a friend who lives there meant a great fun exploring all this amazing scenery and these amazing shapes and colors which which are all over the place we can see it gradually building up until now can't we and all i've done is capture some of these in, in some places huge shapes like this triangle making up the the hillside i'm going to just continue working on that idea and just before we get to those challenging areas, I want the scene to almost be sort of taking shape. Just exaggerated some of the um, perspective, for example, this um, uh, this lamppost, not lamppost, but telephone pole, um, just to create a bit more drama and theatre, I guess. And as ever, I'm not here pretending that you know, all the perspective, everything I've done is absolutely accurate. I've just made a big mistake, for example, with this wall. You can see actually it stops much earlier, but it, for me, it doesn't matter. We can sort of fudge it and add in some wibbly wobbly lines on top of other wibbly wobbly lines and 
it all sort of eventually makes a bit of sense. We've also got all these rocks coming down. And by building up all the big shapes before and leaving these complex areas as negative space before we get to them, we've kind of, we've almost already sketched it. We've already got the shape. We already see where these stairs are going to go um, before we get to them. And that, that takes a lot of the challenging decision making out of our hands, which is really nice when we're a bit uh, worried about perhaps how we might get them in. Especially if we're just going for it, you know, we've just gone straight in with a pen here. So there's plenty of opportunity to make mistakes. I've already pointed out a few of the mistakes I've made. I'm sure that there's more and I'm sure that people can, if they want to, make me feel sad, point out a lot more mistakes that I've made. Um, feel free to, if you want. I won't feel that sad. Um, but it's true, there's mistakes everywhere if, if we determine that we're talking about mistakes as being 100% accurate. So, I've been very philosophical today, but what, what am I trying to achieve? Big shapes, still with these trees and things, it's just the big shapes and the suggestions. And this kind of spiralling out of detail, we've got the focal point, and it's got sort of detail which leads us around the page. But then these big areas where there's not so much detail, where the eye can just, or the brain can decide what's there and fill in gaps. Don't need to draw every rock on this side. Imagine if we did, you'd never see the house because you'd be looking for too long uh, in other places. That is my take on art anyway. So just these lovely loose shapes and wobbly wobbly lines everywhere. So look, we've um, we've got everything mapped in now, haven't we? So how are we going to do these stairs, which are challenging? Stairs are just full of awkward, um, well, awkward shapes and just challenges, aren't they, really? Well, what we're going to do, I've, I've moved them slightly to the left, um, just because of the, the gaps and where the, um, where the line in my paper is. And so I've moved them so that they're no longer in front of the house, just to the, the side of it. Um, and then all I'm going to do is a series of initially just suggestive horizontal lines. And they're going to be, again, a bit wobbly, a bit discontinuous. And they don't go all the way to the side. And then the, some of them can come from the other side and not go all the way over here. And we can alternate. And already that's suggesting, isn't it? Suggesting a sort of down downward trajectory, some stairs. We, Our eyes, our brain fills in an awful lot. We can then try a couple of different things. We could do some hatching and underneath all these. That gives us a bit of shape already, doesn't it? Just a gentle bit of hatching. We can also do sort of a couple of extra horizontal lines in places. That's almost like blocking in the colour a bit more. And actually the combinations of things like this will work well together. It lets you build it up gradually, it lets you stop and look, see that you're not doing too much. Then we can add in a bit more context around it so we can hatch going up where there's like this overlap and suddenly you've got these sort of rocks which are pushing down onto the stairs. We can bring out these bits of grass, float them up. We can sort of just get some of these shapes going in here as well, these kind of rocky shapes which are floating down the edge of the house. Perhaps that's a, the wrong word of the use, a wrong use of the word to float, but hopefully you understand what I mean. And there we go. So we've got these, these stairs in rather easily, just with not really drawing the stairs, but just suggesting them with these lines and shadows, lines and shadows. Got a couple of people as well, haven't we? So we just need to check, sense check how big are they going to be. And they're going to be a little bit bigger than the sort of normal windows, but this is a door, this is a door. So actually the person's going to be about this size, isn't it? So if we just pop in their head, we can then sort of work out where their feet need to go. And we can just join them up. We can make them as detailed or not as we want. So this, this is essentially a cylinder, isn't it, this chappy? We could build on that. We could add a hat. We could just give a bit of shape to his legs. Or we could leave it as it was. And the next one's going to be the same. So 
This time we can work down because we've got a good idea of the size. We're drawing about the same size there. And we can add in people who aren't in the image. Maybe this chappy has got a little kid with them. There you go. And we can just build up a bit of detail. We can put someone in the, the front. And we can pop people just in the background. And now suddenly we've got this sort of feel of this busy staircase. So more than just a little staircase, it's now a busy staircase. We can give another, another child here, perhaps a couple there. And so suddenly there's loads of people going up this, this staircase and it's filled with atmosphere. And we've got this really lovely focal point and we've moved it to, to keep that flow and to keep it away from our edge. Um, and yeah, it works well, doesn't it? But we didn't have to stress, we didn't have to do too much work to get there. Now I'm going to just re-emphasize a couple of lines. Just things which I think are important to the image. And I'm going to add in a tiny bit of very broad hatching. And a bit of detail such as this, this sort of metal work. And I just want to get these ideas of where the shadows are because we're just doing a little touch of colour, a little blob of colour, not, not a huge amount. And then even in the water we can sort of just affect those ripples already and as they come closer they get bigger. And just to build up the shape we can work out, so where's our platform? It's here, so coming down the side of this sort of platform as I called it, you've got a bit of shadow. And here there's a bit of shadow as well. And there we go, that is enough for our sketch. And it's time just to play with some really loose, gentle colours. Not going to do much more than just glaze on top. As, as often the case, I've got some mucky water because I've been painting and things today. And a mucky palette. And that's what I like to use for my little sketches. Since we've got this sort of nice, this is just a sort of generic mix of lots of my dark colours. Um, I was just painting a sort of garden scene and at the end I was adding in the shadows and the dark greens. But we can use that kind of lovely colour for, for our shadows. So we can immediately bring that and sort of pull it along, let it wash over the page. It's a very gentle colour because it's a little mix of lots of things and lots of water. But we can just join up a few of these shadowy areas. We can bring, because we've got some of this green as well, we can sort of bring it up into, into our trees and suddenly everything can have a nice linkage going on. People often ask me exactly what colours they're using and I know when I watch other people sketch I want to know. Well I obviously did that because it's because of the colours they're using. But it, I hope this kind of <laughs> display shows you that it's not necessarily about the colours. It's just about having a bit of fun and You've got some colours you might love, so uh, there are colours I absolutely love and I think make paintings wonderful, but there's also just silly ways like this of using colours so that, you know, any colours would do here, but it, it's the, the tone, the movement of the colours which matters more. This is one of my favourite colours, that said, this is a bit of cobalt turquoise and it's a really lovely way of just creating this sort of beautiful bold effect. And you can see it just creates lovely cauliflower, lovely bloom patterns as well. We can use that in some of our windows as well if we want, and even to just sparkle up some of the, uh, the greenery. I think the last thing I want to add here is probably just a little bit of warmth. This is a very sort of warm, glowing place, isn't it? And there aren't many colours better than quinacridone from fair, sort of showing that off. And I just want that to, again, just pull around and give this idea of light which is just shining through. We can get that light to pull down onto our little staircase as well. And as it mixes with some of those darker colours it becomes more of a grungy colour and that's great because that's sort of still giving that rocky look but it's not giving a sort of false falseness to it I guess. I don't know, don't know a better way of describing that. The last last bit of warmth will be a bit of this calming, this sort of lovely pinky red. And then just come back to the shadows. And I just want to get 
some of these light areas outlined a little more. So this, this white wall, you can just outline it a bit more. This white wall, which I've added a couple of splotches of colour to, well, we can just outline it a bit more as well. We can use our dark colours to just suggest a bit more shape to these stairs. This is actually a roof, so let's just touch in a little bit of red as well as shadow. Okay, and it's quite quite nice and delicate, isn't it, what we've done there? So these people are probably perfectly happy as they are, but let's just experiment. Let's try making them sort of some bold colours just to highlight them, to have them stand out from, well, from the crowd, stand out from the background. So perhaps we'll use colours we've already used. So we've got the, the cobalt. We can add some carmine. Pop in that in a couple of people. And maybe uh, in one of them we'll just make them nice and sort of bold and dark. So this is a bit of uh, moon glow. And we can even mix, mix and match in a couple of places. There we go. So now our people are jumping out. Our colours are mingling wonderfully. We can do a couple of tiny little blobs in some windows. Emphasise a couple of these shapes a little more. Perhaps even get a little bit of depth into that sea. Come back with a little clean and dry brush. And you can shape some of those splodges so that you get something which feels more in keeping with the rest of the sketch. And you could keep going for ages, layering and touching up and doing little bits and bobs. I haven't done splashes for a while in my pet in my sketches, but I was doing it this morning thinking, why, why haven't I been doing this? I think some people I have had comments saying, oh, they look like mistakes. Um, and I, I fully appreciate that you can overdo it, you can do it in the wrong time, or you can just have a personal preference that you don't like splashes and things. I think there's a bit of a skill to them. I think there's a time and a place to use them. And I think they can be really great for sort of bringing bringing the eye in as well so there you go there is my completed sketch splashes and all loose colors oh and my pen's run out of ink so that sketch was perfect timing i use just a different ink to pop my little initials on and there we go this is my version of this sort of warm interesting scene from hydra um it's all about the complexity but making the complex easy really by breaking it down and just suggesting all those frustrating details which staircases and people can often present before using fun colours, light colours to get this kind of glazed effect on top of the sketch. I hope you've enjoyed this and um, please do like and subscribe if you do um, and it's been a pleasure having you along today. Thank you for watching.